Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Untitled Rant Show. If you got a good name for the uh, for the show, put it down in the comments below so we can ignore it. As always, I'm your host, The Mangoose. This week, I'm going to be talking about the people that are a known problem in a game. Like, everybody knows the name as soon as you say it, but somehow nothing ever gets done about them. So that's my topic for this week. Uh, Jelly, what do you got? Something that we've talked about a little bit already in the past, but the capability of to just have fun with the game. Like it doesn't need to, not everyone needs to be a reviewer. Not everyone needs to have the <laughs> super critical thoughts of a game. Like, is it fun? Yes or no? That's kind of the, the topic I have for it today. What about you, Evan? Mangoose put a pull the Raven and didn't introduce everyone. So, hey, yeah, I'm Raven. And uh, I'm going to be talking about uh, just, I don't know, we'll, we'll see how long it goes, but like Fault, uh, I started playing that recently. And I know it's been out for a year and they've been doing whatever on the back end, but itemization is low. Uh, I feel like I play ADC a lot. So when I'm playing ADC, I feel you just build the same thing over and over again. And there's not much like survivability almost. I don't know. We'll see. But yeah. What I'm talking what yeah, my, my topic this week, I mean, I, I brought it up in the, the Richter video I did recently about Fault, is uh, we had an offlaner that was having a terrible time of it, and just flaming the rest of the team, and like, the rest of the team is doing great, like, everybody was doing, was in the positive, having a really good game, he's the only one that wasn't having a great game, and if you're in the offlane, like, it, it wouldn't be so bad, but we had a follow-up game with another guy, he... Ranged characters are a problem in Fault. When they go offlane, it's really hard to deal with them with a Bellica or a, uh, or especially Morgash, it seems. And he was up against the Morgash. He couldn't do much, but he didn't complain about it. He was just like, guys, I'm not going to be able to do much. I'm, th she might take my tower. And we're like, okay. And, and that's how you have to play it as the offlaner. If you have to give your tower instead of your life over and over again, then that's what you do. But this yeah. guy... This guy just kept getting killed over and over again and then blaming it on us for not rotating, even though the people would rotate several times, but every time they'd rotate, she would back up. She was a good player. She was good. He was not. He was getting his shit pushed in. It sucks for him, but the rest of the team's having a great game, so stop hitting fucking F1 to try and surrender. Stop yelling at everybody. Just suck it up. And I, I think, Jelly, I think you've covered this before. Learn how to be carried by your team. Like mm -hmm. every, you're not going to, you're not going to be the superstar every freaking game you play and nobody's judging you if you're having a bad game, if they're having a good game. Nope. I think that's what a lot of it stems from. They assume that everyone's thinking that they're a terrible player. We don't think you're a terrible player. You're just, you're having a bad game, but you know, kick back, let everybody else carry for you play in such a, in such a way that you can contribute when you can. But if you can't contribute, don't go face first into the enemy team and die. Just, just that's that's not helping anyone so yeah i mean but the thing is when i when i posted that and i talked about it there were several people in the comments were like oh yeah i've played with that guy he did the same shit to us and oh yeah i i, I recognize that name he was a, he was really really bad when, when we played with him when you get these people that everybody knows and you know that people are reporting them but why are why are they still playing why are, why have they been banned like um it's been a problem in a couple discords like there'll be a certain person that's just extremely aggressive in discord and ruins the experience for everybody else just ban them just get them just get them out of there if everybody know if you think if you can think of if it, if the topic gets brought up like people are really salty in this in this discord and everybody immediately thinks of three names get those three names the fuck out of there because it's ruined it for the rest of the community no matter how much you like them they're ruining the experience for everybody else and that's it needs to be tackled early on in a lot of these games alphas to just get rid of the bad apples so that everybody else can have fun playing the game. That's uh, considering it's such a small community anyway. Yeah, exactly. Just get on it, yeah. And especially for fault when they talk about like we're not worried about the player base, then why aren't you getting rid of these players, right? If you're not worried about your player base, then this one person doesn't count, right? Or the the ten people that everybody can think of. Absolutely. And when yeah. I was playing Fault all the time, there were absolutely those names that I could be like, oh, okay, well, we've got this guy, so he's just going to be toxic the whole game, <laughs> yeah. right? Like, it's just one of those things, unfortunately. Um, to kind of hit on your point of, like, getting carried, just let your team carry you sometimes. That's what you have to do. That's what you have to do. But that doesn't mean just give up either. Right, oh, right. That's a exactly. Delay, make the game as hard as possible for your enemy laner without throwing your life at them every single time either. 
right? If you have to lose, but it takes you 20 minutes instead of 10 minutes to lose your lane, that's worth it. You delayed them twice as long as it should have taken. Or it could Man, have taken, rather. I had that so many times in League, playing ranked, because I play top lane all the time, and that's how I got to gold. There's so many games where I would be Yorick, because I love Yorick, but he's so shitty early. There's so many more champs that just do more things earlier on. Until he hits five, he's kind of meh. Unless you're going against like a weak, maybe like a ranger up top or something. But any other, like a Darius or something, you're going to get smoked. So I've had so many games where I'm sitting there, yeah, I'm getting my shit pushed in. Or I'm getting ganked and like I'm not getting help. And sure, like maybe the rest of the team's doing right. And I'm that guy who's like, guys, I think it's over. I've got to fucking surrender, you know? <laughs> and I'll throw it up. But like, there's so many games like that too, though. Because of Yorick and his split push potential, or even if I'm sitting back and farming, then once I have Maiden, I can actually go and then start just... If they ignore the lane because I'm so far behind, I can just take towers like it's nothing. And then at that point, yeah, then I'm just kind of... Yeah. I've kind of learned that over the years now of playing multiple MOBAs and coming from Paragon to different ones and more established ones, yeah, it's, it's a, the KD, it don't matter. It's it's the game. You know, you, you got to win the game. It's, you could. I've gone games where I've gone like 11-0 and it's still fucking lost, and I'd be like, okay, but like we didn't win. Yeah. So it's it's a big deal. And toward the end of that, to make a point from last week's video, um, Astro, this is where last hitting and wave management comes in. Just saying. <laughs> you can lose your lane and still win the game because you had better last hitting and wave management and brought yourself back. All right. Just had to call him out for a second there. <laughs> Always calling out Astro. Poor Astro. I have to. I have to. <laughs> uh, that's a lie himself. on the topic. Okay. All right. Well, I mean, I think this applies to a lot of the games that we play. But 420 also, Turbo Marianne 69. <laughs> <laughs> I'm coming for you. Um, but a lot of the games we play, but also just, the, I think the gaming industry as a whole right now is having this problem of just saying, am I having fun playing this game? Right? And that it, very, very baseline, very simple. Is it fun to play? Am I enjoying myself? If yes, keep playing. If no, stop. Right? Like just, that's the flow chart. Not everybody needs to break down every ounce of every detail. And I get it. I, I'm i a theory crafter, right? So I love kind of breaking down those details and finding the little nuanced things. And I think content creation has uh, kind of elevated that issue of everyone feels like they can be a content creator or have breakdowns of these things. And so everyone's coming out with their own reviews of a game that tear it down before it even has a chance to do anything even if right. the game itself is fun. I think Hood is the perfect example of this right now. The game is fun, right? I think the majority of people that I've seen online say that the game is fun, but it has issues, and so everyone can only focus on the issues instead of the fact that they're having fun playing the game. It's, yeah, it's like the, the I tweeted this out a couple of days ago, but I said, hey, here's a great idea. If you want to personally review a game, pick it up, play it. Is it good? Are you having fun? Good review. Are you not having fun? Okay, it's bad. Then it's like yeah like you could listen to all these people i think we talked about this like last week or something but you could listen to all these people but i mean I, i've look at how many people are calling hood shit and i'm still yeah like you said i'm still playing it i'm having fun so it's just have fun with a game and if you enjoy it cool play it unfortunately i guess with these multiplayer games nowadays it's a big deal with player base and player count and even if you're the one having fun there might not be enough people to play that goes the other way too like um my, my example would be outriders I have zero complaints about Outriders. I thought it was, I think they did everything really well. I just didn't enjoy playing the game. Like I didn't, wasn't having that much fun playing Outriders, so I didn't ended up not buying it. I didn't go give them a shitty review though. I was just, ah, not this game's not for me. Moved on, and luckily and I didn't have to spend any money to find that out. Yeah, and there's there's a difference. We've actually been talking about it in my Discord this week. There's a difference between you not liking something and it being bad. Right. There, there is a personal taste involved in that. And sure, so there is some crossover occasionally that you can say, I don't like this because it's bad. But you can just not like something and it, it'd still be good outside of that. I think Outriders is the perfect example. It's kind of a, some people will like this, some people won't. But the game itself is a is a solid idea of what it was trying to be. Yeah, and Hood seems to be a weird situation where people just love to shit on that game if they don't like it. <laughs> it's like, well, just don't play it. I don't, I don't know. So bizarre, man. I don't get it. I think if you don't like it within the first couple hours, just get a refund from Steam and move on. That's, yeah, if you care that deal. much, yeah. 
I think the like prime example that we have in recent history that I think is more applicable to more people is Cyberpunk 2077. Right, yeah. Um, I absolutely adore the game, right? I had so much fun playing through it. I played through the campaign three or four times, went through it all, and, and had a great time playing it. Does it have its issues? No question it has its <laughs> issues. But I still had fun playing it, and I would have left it a positive review despite the issues because of that concept. I felt like that game, it was like the thing to do to shit on it. To just constantly be like, oh yeah, because of its issues, it's just a bad game. And it was just like, and if you, you almost became an outcast if you did like the game, despite its issues. Like it was a weird kind of time to be in of everybody hating, just kind of bandwagoning hate about a game, even if it was fun for a good chunk of players. Right. Is, is there even a game out there that's just perfect and everyone just loves? Doesn't have some kind of small issue that someone's gonna bring up. Team Fortress Two. I guess, yeah. Huh. <laughs> I didn't. The like only example that. I can think of of a game that I can't remember real negative feedback being on. <laughs> Maybe it's just the way people are, you know, mentalities are heading nowadays. With it's just got to be perfect. I don't know. It's a if weird it's situation though, because you got all these indie games that are extremely popular that don't really fit the popular bill. Like the graphics aren't there. The some of them are straight up eight bit, but pe but they're fun and people enjoy them, so they end up getting yeah. really great reviews. Which is weird because it seems like there is no middle ground between the two things. You're right. either expected to yeah. be this absolutely pristine, perfect game, or you're allowed to have your flaws and we'll love you anyway for it. But there is no middle ground between those two camps. Like, and it's you'll see the same people shit on Cyberpunk that then love these indie games that come out like. Celeste and things like that that aren't as graphically intensive or aren't like there it's just weird to see the the both sides of that coin it might be the craft beer effect where people think that just because a beer was made by Budweiser that it can't be possibly be good whereas any shitty craft beer that they try they'll claim that it's great even though they don't Incredible. That's it. sick it's the best thing ever yeah dude. there are some really great craft beers out there like Celeste is fantastic and Mm -hmm. uh, Grease, fantastic. That, those are those are the indie games that fucking pop up into my mind. But just because some indie games are really good and inventive doesn't mean that the AAA studios can't make something good. Like, they can. Like, they've proven that mm -hmm. they can. You don't have to shit on every single thing that a AAA studio puts out just because it's a AAA studio. Yeah, And you don't sure. need to reward indie studios for being indie, right? Like, it, right, exactly, yeah. They actually have to produce something that's worth being hyped up about at the same time so it's you can have the elements of both on the other side for sure review games for for what they are for for, for games if you had fun playing it yes they, exactly what you started out this conversation with jelly yeah and it's fair to like point out the flaws like yeah mm -hmm. like could sure like there's problems and you know content's gonna come but like look at it as yeah it's going to come and enjoy it for what we got right now it's you know it's again it's been two weeks three two weeks, weeks yeah two, almost three weeks like come on man and every time they post something online it's like oh dead game well moving on like next thing they've whatever. had three or to four i think like dev blogs already talking about the game they clearly are listening and watching yeah no they're just being people are just ridiculous yeah gamers are a fickle group indeed speaking of i can't wait to see the assassination change Ooh. <laughs> me and mangoes were having a good time yesterday side note i was hitting a million and i mean a million sticky grenades with john <laughs> just left and right just sticky sticky i'm out of here that was how i played john i don't even need to hit them with the hammer and i had that one good game with robin that's gonna make me want to oh, think so that excited i can play now. robin now <laughs> he's like dude i see why it's so much fun while you play him sniping people across the map when you land those shots, I think that's probably the best feeling in that game. Oh, yeah. It's probably being player. Robin and landing, like, two headshots in a row. And you're like, ooh, yeah, I'm feeling good right Yo, now. Oh, nice. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I kind of, I saw a Tuck sliding down the rope, and I shot my arrow at the bottom of the rope and got a headshot just as he got to the bottom. <laughs> and I was like, oh, oh, that's nice. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. All right, that's Raven, that. what you got? You go with that? All right, yeah. Yep. So I'll, I'll talk quick about Fault. I mean, so I'm an ADC man, and... Coming from, I tried, I don't remember if I tried Predecessor, it's a predecessor at this point first before Fault, but playing Fault, it, when it first came out a year ago, it was really weird. I didn't like 
I just the whole game itself felt off, but I mean, I'm sure many other people felt the same way. And then even up until now, it's like there's no real notification of like, oh, I'm about to die. Like you just kind of die. Whereas like I guess like yeah, you have like the heartbeat, whatever, but it's not as obvious as it was like in prior games or whatever. And hitting auto attacks feels weird because it's it's hit scan. I think in fault so it's instant it goes right where you're going i think in predecessor it has a little bit of like a skill shot element to it where you could there is some kind of travel time to it which i actually prefer and just directly comparing those two iterations of this game yeah i just had more fun playing adc and predecessor now to be fair i now i've played twin blast murdoch rim and now i just tried sparrow for fault and what a difference, because Sparrow is fucking busted. No, no one told me this. <laughs> She's got two slows, and then the stacking and damage, obviously, but that, that's, that's always been like that. But, and by the way, side note, I found a bug with her. If you're attacking minions, or and then, then at least the blue and like green and gold buffs, the stacking damage actually decreases every time you hit an auto attack. It, it'll go down, and I visibly saw that. But when I went to Raptor, it visibly went up like it should be. I don't know how it was in towers and players didn't really notice, but so yeah. And then Mangus told me to build this one item, the saber thing that lets you do the dash, and it's got like the most physical damage. Once I had that, and yeah, that game I played on Sparrow, I was popping off. I was like, okay, now I feel good again. But the other characters, I had my moments, and then later on in the game, it feels like I kind of fall off almost. When that's should be the opposite with ADC. And then you're sitting there, and then you all have kind of like the same items. You go like grave diggers, boots. Tykes fire cannon, and then you go like jar hearts for another lifesteal thing, or maybe devourer's blade, which I think is kind of useless on ADC, to be honest. Uh, but it just, it, I don't know, it, like it, the game's been out a year, and they're now starting to get new items, but it still just kind of feels stale to me. And like I had more fun playing jungle. There's like a Severog or, or Grux or something so far, or even Richter. I was playing Richter jungle last night, that was kind of fun. So it, it just, it, it feels feels weird to me right now. I think in Fault, and granted it's been a little while since I've played consistently, but Fault, the, the two lanes or roles that have the most diversity in builds is offlane and jungle. From what I've seen and played, it felt like mid lane and the carry support are pretty much the same build almost every game because that's what you have to run, right? like to be, to be viable. When right. I was making builds consistently for Fault and putting them out on Reddit and all of that, Basically, all the carries had the same build, maybe with one item difference, depending. Um, and most of the mid laners had a very, very similar build because the item diversity is just not there. Yeah, and even like the the kits themselves are just for the heroes are not that different. You know, Belko, you got two damaging spells and a powerful ult. Gideon, you have two damaging spells and a powerful ult. Gadget, you have two damaging spells and a powerful ult. Like, it's just, it goes on and on even with the carries you know it's so yeah i don't know maybe i'm just waiting for something or i'm just really still on that train of like i, I still kind of need something new for these kind of games or i'm just still missing revenant that i keep complaining about every day <laughs> or maybe one day i get to play him again who knows yeah, yeah i will say as a as a support main if you're not building bot d first blessings of the divine and fault then you're wrong like mm -hmm. Everybody rushes that item. It's the most powerful item in the entire game. Like, you can completely ne negate a wombo combo by pressing one button, and everybody builds it, and, like, there needs to be... There needs to be something else. There needs to be something different there. Yeah, it's... And I think, to an extent, oh. in Predecessor's last test in October, they had the same problem. Where it became that almost every lane... Yes, they did. Except maybe the junglers ran the same thing every single game because that's just what you had to run to be at the, the highest level of that character. Now, they did have some... They introduced some a, 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 pretty, a, a pretty big variety of items into the last Pred test, because I know I yes. had a lot of fun making like some weird builds for oh. Arbash. Yeah. Are you, which one are you referring to, Jelly, with the same build? Was that the last one they just had the or the one prior? Test. Yeah, the one, the one they just did most recently. Okay, because what he's saying, yeah, they did introduce new items, and I did actually experiment and felt that when I was playing Sparrow and that, with these newer items, she actually was doing something. Because before that, she felt useless because of those items. They sucked. They were all the same. <laughs> but there were a couple new ones that made her feel a little bit better. I'll say that. 
I think the I, the items they added helped, but didn't didn't make it enough difference, right? Because right. those new items basically became the items that everybody ran instead of the previous ones, in a lot of cases. Yeah, not much yeah. diversity of build in either game, really. Yeah. Just we're all still kind of waiting for that then. Maybe one day. <laughs> or maybe I'll just play King's Hunt and then it's super diverse. <laughs> <laughs> when is the next King's got... Hunt? Does anybody have any info, I... info on the next King's Hunt? Play no, I... The only thing that I have seen... Oh, I'm already in Discord, that's why. But I can't look. Uh, the only <laughs> thing I've seen is that they posted in their general Discord, uh, Timo, the CEO guy, he posted a new screenshot. And it just looked a lot more higher res and graphically better than what it has been. Okay. It was them running out of the fog wall. None of the heroes, just the minions and the fucking slug turret bubble shooting thing. Okay. Cool. Right on. So, they said something soon. I don't know. We're looking at assume TM with them now. <laughs> Great. Does that about wrap right it up for, for for you, Raven? Or yeah, that's it for me, man. Cool. Right on. Let's uh, move on to plugs. Jelly, you got anything to plug? Comments? We're not doing comments? Comments? Oh, comments. My bad. Oh! Angus. Gee. <laughs> this guy. I could roll right into one because we we're just talking about fault, but uh, Fortster was talking about like expression of skill, and he's talking about the Severy work that ended up happening, where everything was a stack, no matter if you killed it with an ability or not. And so for someone who mastered Sev and Paragon, yeah, that was boring as fuck. Because you just sat there and you was just... You, you, could you farm better? You know, that was what it was. So at least right now in fall kind of feels a little better. I just think their stack numbers are a little crazy. Your max stack has to be 350. That takes a really long time. But maybe it's because I'm playing jungle sev. I'm not sure. And I guess most people play them in the off lane. But yeah, like yeah, they do. that. It shouldn't just because at that point, you just turn into a time thing. Like as long as the game keeps going, you're going to get to that point. Whereas if it was let me get uh, like only siphon stacks, which would be tough, but make them a higher count and then drop your overall stack count down. Then it becomes okay. Now I can do what I do in the jungle, where I'm cu where I'm whittling down these minions and then I stack all of them with one siphon, and I get a lot from that. And then by like maybe the you know 20, 25, maybe 30 minute mark, I'm already at max stacks because I'm just doing it that well. Yeah, I I agree. That's you know we games games need that for sure. I really yeah, hope absolutely. we get to see I that mean, cool another comment from Fordster, too. kind of what we talked about more today in depth, is that games will not be perfect. They won't appeal to everyone, and that's okay. If it's not you, if it's not your cup of tea, then you can leave. You don't have to play it. You can do your own thing. You do you. Right? But give people the chance to decide for themselves instead of feeling like you have to go out there and gatekeep whether or not somebody likes a game or not. Right? Like... If, if I go in and say, like, I hate League of Legends, and everybody looks at me like, no, screw you, like, whatever. Like, <laughs> it's ridiculous. Uh, I'm you got anything, right Angus? What? Uh, interesting interesting uh, comment from Colin Healy about the difference between Smite and Paragon. The uh, Was the camera effect? I think, yeah, I think that that played a lot into it. Paragon really felt visceral when you, you hit ability or whether you, when you got hit by something. Smite, it just... It feels like it goes out and there's an effect and that's it. Yeah, you have the complete opposite. You have Paragon that was the realistic game. You had the Z axis. Uh, you know, it felt like an action game you were playing. And then, yeah, you go to Smite and it's. I mean, the graphics are good and all, but they, it's a different style. It's a little more cartoony, I guess. And yeah, there's no feedback. There's not a lot of feedback. So it kind of feels like an arcade game to me. All right. Oh, yeah. All right, cool. No, is that it? Do, do, is there another segment I'm not I'm not remembering? <laughs> Are you gonna say shout out to the the tens yeah, of fault YouTubers? Yeah, this is the Mangoose takes his shirt off on video segment. Oh, of the title <laughs> yeah. brand show. oh shit! Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. Yeah, the tens tens of fault YouTubers. The tens yeah. of fault YouTubers. That's it. <laughs> All right, uh, Jelly. Anything to plug? Just the YouTube. More videos this week. YouTube. Lots of videos coming out this week. Yeah. Right so. On. Excited about those. Lots of in-depth stuff, but that's about it for me. Raven? Right, you, Raven? Uh, if you like the hood content, uh, I'm still pumping out a lot of new stuff for that. Uh, I had the Robin montage that did pretty well, and I just came out the first in my revival series from five years ago of called Outlaws 101, where I'm going to go through and do like a short synapse of each outlaw 
but also poking fun at the game. So yeah, it was really good. You're you're Robin one. Thank was, you. Yeah, and a lot of fun with that one. It was funny and informative, just the way yes. I like it. I actually got a comment on Reddit. The guy was saying, "Yeah, this is really good. It's a good mix of like informative and funny." Yeah. I was like, okay, yeah. Reddit <laughs> elitist coming out of here. <laughs> what about you, Mangooth? Yeah, same old shit. Yeah. yeah. Plug yourself <laughs> up your nose. Mm. Plug it. Doing a bunch of YouTubery. But yeah, that'll be it. Um, hope you guys enjoyed that. If you have any comments that you want us to go over next time, and I promise Jelly won't forget, even though I did. <laughs> it'll, be on, it'll be on Jelly's channel next week. But uh, yeah, I um, hope you guys had a good time, and uh, you guys have a good one. I had no idea how to close it out. This I thought time. you were for sure going to say and join us as we enter the ether. Yeah. Man, go. Shout out to Foolish Blood Hunter and Ferenth for becoming members of the channel.